Welcome to Time Talks, covering the latest global news from a time perspective. I'm Robert Cho. As Manila and Beijing grapple with sovereignty issues in the South China Sea, the Philippines aims to bolster its defense relationship with the U.S. and Japan. Yet the Philippine armed forces confirmed they won't engage in military relations with Taiwan. Let's dive into the evolving military collaboration between the Philippines, the U.S. and Japan and explore the reasons behind the Philippines' stance on Taiwan. Joining us today are Tang Shaochen, National Zhengzhi University, Institute of International Relations Research Fellow, and Jeremy Jiang Huaizhe, Foundation for Future Generations Associate Research Fellow. A very warm welcome to both on the show. Romeo Browner, the Armed Forces of the Philippines' Chief of Staff, announced plans to enhance facilities on U.S. accessible military bases and deepen ties with Japan's self-defense forces next year. The Philippines is eyeing Japanese radar systems, aircraft, ships, and weaponry. With evident U.S. influence, the Philippines and Japan are increasing military cooperation. Are these moved to counter China? And how does this collaboration work? So the first question goes to Professor Tang. Mm -hmm. You know, since uh, Japan has also problems with China over the Diaoyutai Senkaku issues, so in the late uh, in these years, Japan has its tactic to divert its pressure from China to the South China Sea, and that makes the Philippines the natural and very perfect partner of Japan to cooperate. Uh, with each other and to counter China on the issues of both concerns. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how would, how would that work? It is also a very, very uh, sensitive problematic, both for Japan and also for the Philippines. Yeah. Because Japan has the problems, as I just mentioned, uh, with, with, with China and the Philippines also has the South China Sea problematic. So that's why both sides, they try to uh, cooperate and uh, collaborate uh, with each other under the support of the United States because the United States is the major uh, partner of Japan and also to the Philippines. Okay. Okay, um, so Mr. Chang, do you agree with Professor Tang's uh, comments that uh, uh, in the whole scenario, uh, you know, why we see there's a conflict between Philippines and China and also involving Japan? From the Japanese perspective is that Japanese, uh, the government wants to divert the attention from the uh, uh, Daikaku, the Diaoyuta Island, uh, from, from there to the South China Sea. If, if I were to think of this more from a uh, Philippine perspective, I believe this is uh, less about intentionally countering China, but rather uh, how they're seeking to think about what are the multiple routes they can uh, move forward to protect their territorial integrity and their sovereign claims. Of course, while the U.S. has played a very pivotal role in bolstering uh, Japan-Philippine mm -hmm. relations, we should also think about you know, how over time, Japan-Philippine relations has been actually more resilient in the face of political shocks than uh, in compared with Philippine-U.S. relations. We just need to think about when during the Duterte administration. So in general, Philippine foreign policy you know, spanning several consecutive presidents has been characterized by an intention to diversify its international partnerships. That includes Korea, Japan, mm. Russia, and India. So what's new, I believe, is that uh, uh, in D.C., there are people thinking about how they align this Philippine intent with their own intentions to build this network of alliances to deter China. So this means, you know, hosting trilateral and quadrilateral meetings between uh, national security advisors, foreign ministers, and also defense ministers between Japan, Philippines, Australia, and the United States. They even hosted their uh, inaugural uh, trilateral uh, military uh, maritime exercises earlier this year. Right, but uh, my question was actually about the Japanese, uh, its policy over the, the mm. uh, northeast uh, uh, water, and that in, in that part, uh, there's a uh, dispute over the island too, right? So mm. now Japan is kind of part of the uh, U.S. and also Philippines, and in the southeast, uh, South China Sea. And what's your calculation, if, if uh, in according to your observation? Dur during Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's term, he already uh, tried to reorient Japan's national security strategy into thinking about how they can put forward more positive and proactive 
contributions towards peace. Mm -hmm. So when they started to enact their uh, groundbreaking uh, OSA, Official Security Assistance Programs, which is in contrast with uh, development programs, Philippines was already on top of their list because I don't think they're only thinking about this through a uh, mere geopolitical lens. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are some historical legacies, but of course, they see their own disputes with China within a wider lens. I think this has been a long game in the making. Of course, like individual incidents in the past months might have you know, put some breaks and some impetus in those calculuses, but the long-term trajectory has been there for some several years. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the U.S. currently utilizes uh, nine military bases in the Philippines and is aiming to expand its uh, presence. The Philippine military appears open to increasing these bases. So what might amplify tensions uh, which, which might amplify tensions with China. So what insight do these nine bases offer about U.S.-Philippine cooperation? Maybe, uh, Professor, you go first. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, uh, the United States and the Philippines, they signed a defense, the mutual defense treaty in the early 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still valid uh, to this date. And also, the, the United States has uh, signed a, the, same, the same kind of treaty with Japan. Uh, for the mutual defense, yeah. So, the f if the United, uh, if the Philippines wants to uh, cooperate with with Japan, the, it, it has a, a very good platform for them because both of them they were supported by the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the first point. And second point is the Philippines actually uh, their military uh, capability is very very much limited. Uh, they have only 120,000 uh, men uh, under uniform. So that's why they need a lot of uh, support from outside, mm -hmm. uh, from Japan and uh, certainly from the United States. So they granted the nine bases, as just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, to the United States. And mostly, uh, most importantly, is for Taiwan, is one of them is only 40, 400 kilometers to Taiwan. So it represents a very, very strong uh, capability of coercion on, or, or uh, of a challenge uh, between the U United States and, and Philippines of the of one hand and China of the other hand in protection of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, uh, the basis is very, very much important for both the, the Philippines and for the, United, for the United States. And also in peacetime, mm. these are a perfect, a very good functional training spots mm. <laughs> for the Philippines mm -hmm. for, for, for the preparation of, uh, uh, in case of uh, conflict and war. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jiang, uh, according to your experience, uh, living experience in Philippines, so uh, you know, <coughs> what's the function uh, of the nine military bases from the United States, uh, aside from uh, what uh, Professor mentioned for uh, uh, peacetime and also uh, in case of contingency? I mean, wh what are the function of the nine uh, bases over there? If we were to think about these bases, we should look at them uh, through the context of uh, wider uh, U.S.-Philippine security cooperation. You know, that security co cooperation has been characterized by uh, three main pillars, as uh, Professor Tang has mentioned. Of course, the MDT signed in the 1950s and also in the 1990s, the Visiting Forces Agreement, which preserves the legal status of U.S. troops in the Philippines and also vice versa, Philippine troops in the United States. And in 2014, the uh, EDCA, basically. Mm -hmm. The EDCA bases are what we are talking about nowadays. Mm -hmm. So overall, I believe that these facilities, they provide a platform to bolster joint capabilities and also enhance integrated deterrence mm -hmm. uh, between the United States and the Philippines. And also, if we see about the rapid deployment, the development of these bases, it really highlights the very robust nature of uh, U.S.-Philippines relations nowadays. So. If we're talking about what do these bases do? So uh, as uh, Professor Tang has already mentioned, of course, training is also a very important component mm -hmm. to them. But at the same time also, they, shor they serve as a uh, four deployed uh, warehouses for equipment and other things that are very important for regional humanitarian mm -hmm. disasters. And also, of course, they are also hubs for uh, ammunition and fuel storage and also uh, aircraft planning, uh, placing uh, sites. So multiple functions and they serve as mentioned, uh, oriented towards externally, mm -hmm. defense posture, 
but as also domestically, as Philippines is also very prone to uh, uh, natural disasters, and also it could serve as a hub for the United States to provide assistance to other neighboring countries as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now this uh, goes to the question which kind of uh, take into account the role of Taiwan. Uh, even uh, both Philippines, the Philippines and Taiwan facing similar challenges from China. Uh, you know, the Philippines chief of staff has stressed no military engagement with Taiwan now or in the future. This might be a disappointment to uh, Taiwanese people uh, in general, but does that mean the Philippines won't intervene in a Taiwan Strait crisis? Professor Tang? Uh, it's very difficult to think that the, that the Philippines will involve in the uh, conflict between Taiwan and China. Yeah? Firstly, because as I just mentioned, the military capability is rather, uh, <laughs> rather weak, uh, only one, one 120,000 uh, uh, men are in uniform. And secondly, because the Philippines has diplomatic relations with the PRC, and they, the, the Manila uh, administration, considers constantly that the Taiwan issue <laughs> belongs to the Ta Chinese domestic affairs. Mm -hmm. So that's why <laughs> it, it is also very, very difficult or barely thinkable that the, the Philippines will automatically or uh, actively uh, get involved in the uh, uh, Taiwan-China uh, problematic. And also, <coughs> on the other hand, Manila has official, not official relations with Taiwan. Yeah? And uh, at most, that the, the Filipino uh, government could let the United States utilize their bases or, or their facilities to counter China in, in times of contingency. Yeah? Mm -hmm. that's, I, 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 I can say that's the most what the, the Philippines can do. And in this term, I mean, in, in these circumstances, they can offer, for instance, lo logistic uh, supplies and, and so on, mm -hmm. but not get involved directly. It is, uh, for me, unthinkable. Okay, uh, Mr. Zhang, um, you know, the unwillingness of the Philippine military to cooperate with Taiwan, uh, what does that mean to you? So I, I agree with some parts of uh, what Professor Tang has mentioned. Mm -hmm. I think the diplomatic realities, of course, would cause some constraints in terms of how the Philippines can intervene in such a scenario. But at the same time, I also understand that, you know, intervention can take you know, many forms, right? Uh, as uh, President Marcos has said earlier this year, you know, it's very hard to imagine that the Philippines, uh, due to geographical proximity, will not be caught up in you know, some kind of a uh, Taiwan uh, Strait scenario. So you know, as uh, many experts have suggested, you know, uh, the Philippines could, in concert with the United States and other allies, exert uh, diplomatic pressure towards Beijing at the minimum. It could also serve as a logis logistical support hub. It could also be a uh, hub for uh, Taiwanese and United States aircraft to divert there in times of crisis. I believe uh, a lot of uh, <coughs> observers are watching very mm. closely you know, how these scenarios could play out. There's a lot of imagination out there. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, the bottom line is that the overarching priority of these three countries is to preserve a free and open Indo-Pacific mm. uh, region with stability and with peace. Mm -hmm. So I believe that there's a very strong structural factor pushing all these countries together to think about you know, creative scenarios to how to address these diplomatic realities while at the same time producing conducive outcomes for all parties controlled. Mm -hmm. Given the fact that the uh, uh, Philippines uh, is more eager to partner with Japan militarily, uh, we know that Japanese Prime Minister Kishida, uh, he's going to meet the uh, Philippine President Marcos Jr. in November to in enhance the ties uh, from both parties. Is it, does that mean uh, you know, Philippines want to sidestep Taiwan Strait risks if there's any. I know that both of you mentioned uh, some of the functions of the Philippines in case of Taiwan contingency, uh, maybe server, say for, for, for example, logistical uh, uh, center or hub that to help the, uh, you know, the need of Taiwan or the need of the US military. But uh, what's the calculation of uh, Philippines uh, want to, you know, directly contact Japan for a further cooperation instead of, uh, you know, contact Taiwan. Both the Philippines and Japan are archipelago nations. Uh, they have been uh, 
facing uh, mounting pressure on part of Beijing in their surrounding waters, Japan, uh, Senkaku Islands, East China Sea disputes, and the Philippines, as we've witnessed recently, a lot of military and maritime intimidation in the South China Sea. Mm. So there has been some overlap in the issues that uh, concern both countries. And also, as mentioned significantly, both countries, they're all treaty allies of the United States, and they okay. also border Taiwan in some sense. So a crisis in the Taiwan Strait, of, of course, it would not only affect global commercial activity, it will also endanger uh, their surrounding regions. And also, since there's a lot of uh, Philippine and Japanese nationals working in Taiwan, that will be an issue of concern to them. So a shared sense of understanding of regional dynamics creates a shared sense of mission. And, and together, it pushes forward a shared, maybe shared vision in some as aspects of how they should further their security cooperation. So that, that's why, as I mentioned earlier, official security assistance towards the Philippines and also when Japan recently, in recent years, trying to open up uh, military uh, export to other countries, the Philippines was also a very important part in that regard. In late June, Taiwanese Foreign Minister Joseph Wu suggested in an interview with Filipino media that the Philippines and Taiwan should consider expanding security cooperation However, Philippine Defense Secretary Gilbert Teodoro recently stated in an interview that the possibility of security cooperation between the Philippines and Taiwan is close to zero. The Philippine Foreign Minister also remarked that the relations between China and Taiwan and its status as an international body are an internal question between China and Taiwan. Teodoro stated, we do not have diplomatic relations with Taiwan. We only have diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China. Currently, we have treaties and alliances with the United States and other countries dedicated to enhancing our reliable deterrence capabilities. How we do this and who we align with is our prerogative. Uh, Teodoro further emphasized, uh, security measures with Taiwan would be a blatant disregard of that core issue of China. So given this response from the Philippine Defense Secretary, uh, Professor, so what, how should Taiwan proceed with diplomatic and military cooperation with the Philippines? And by extension, uh, of course, there's a behind the scenes United States. You know, in terms of uh, political or diplomatic relations, they are high politics and low politics. And uh, the minister is, has made it very clear that in the high politics sphere, uh, the Philippines is very, very sensitive because they consider the Taiwan issue as a domestic affairs of China, of the PRC. So they prevent uh, to intervene in the domestic affairs in, uh, in, in China. So that's why that leaves only the uh, so-called so low politics field. For instance, the, uh, the trade and, and uh, culture exchange and people-to-people uh, -people exchange and, and so on. On this field, these, we, both Taiwan and the Philippines, we have a lot of room of maneuver that we can do a lot. We can do many, many things to improve the bilateral relations. And we can, we can shape the, uh, the so-called the mutual trust mm. between the two sides. Mm. And then we can see when the time is right, then maybe we can do some, do some breakthrough. But uh, for the time being, <laughs> I, think, I don't think the time is, uh, is right yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Zhang, what about you? Uh, Taiwan, the solution for Taiwan to build up uh, a stronger or strengthen the Thai, uh, military tie or diplomatic tie with uh, Philippine, the Philippines? Um, first of all, I want to go back to uh, Defense Secretary Theodore's mm -hmm. statements. I think the, the context of his statements are also very important. When he made those statements, he was actually relatively new to office, had only come forward you know, a very short time while mm -hmm. ago. I think he might be uh, testing the tonal and uh, depth of the adequate language that he should deploy on these issues. And also the context is also very important, which is that uh, they've been encountering uh, increased Chinese intimidation in the South China Sea. Right. They do not want to be perceived by Beijing as you know, playing a so-called Taiwan card. Say they, want, m they might want to stabilize relations with Beijing using certain signals. So that's understandable. But understandable does not mean acceptable because, of course, from a Taiwanese perspective, mm -hmm. you know, this stance is pretty regrettable because Taiwan, you know, is a sovereign and independ independent country and has no day been uh, controlled by the People's Republic of China. So mm -hmm. that is very clear. But at the same time, I believe that there is also very sound basis for bilateral cooperation. Mm -hmm. For example, when both countries, uh, Taiwan and the Philippines, tried to resolve uh, fishery disputes in our uh, mm -hmm. overlapping uh, EEZs, right. 
We had the 2015 uh, Thailand Philippine Fisheries Agreement and also had a technical working group to facilitate regular communication. So, so that foundation is already there. And as mentioned by our host today, uh, so what can be done about Thailand Philippine relations? I believe that we have very strong, solid foundations over there. We have uh, uh, Taiwan, uh, the Philippines is home to many migrants in Taiwan. We also have uh, a shared Austronesian cultural heritage and also a shared aspiration for the region. I believe that the New South Wales policy should be strengthened and also with a increased emphasis on you know, areas where uh, the Philippine and Taiwan can work together. That means industry, digital economy, agriculture, tourism, uh, ter tourism and also uh, Milit uh, sorry, uh, maritime, affairs maritime affairs and, you know, many other areas too. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually some experts believe that the Philippines won't intervene in the Taiwan Strait crisis unless the U.S. is drawn into the conflict with China. Given uh, Teodoro's hesitance towards military collaboration with Taiwan, does this suggest that the Philippines might act as a logistic support hub during a potential emergency in Taiwan? I know that some of you mentioned a bit. Uh, could you kind of uh, bring us uh, in, in, in deeper uh, to imagine what that would look like? Uh, maybe, Professor, you go first. Yeah. Uh, that depends. Mm -hmm. That depends on the situation. Yeah? Uh, because as we just mentioned, that the United States has mutual defense treaties with the Philippines, with Korea, with Japan, and also with Thailand, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, far away, the uh, Australia. So if uh, the United States is drawn into a conflict with China, uh, per the, the Taiwan issue. Uh, all these countries are actually allies mm. of the United States. Right. So that depends on in how far all these allies from the United States, they want to intervene. Mm. Uh, according to the treaty of, that means the defense, mutual defense treaty, they are obliged to do something. But what will that be? That's another big question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can say, okay, logistic uh, supports, or they can say maybe uh, some military actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that depends on the timing. Yeah, when that happened, or when that should happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it is uh, very difficult to predict what will really actually happen uh, for this state. Mm -hmm. Mr. Zhang, I actually have another question for you because uh, there's a recent collision between Chinese and Filipino vessels in the South China Sea uh, have intensified the China-Philippines tension. With both nations point fingers at each other, the U.S. backed the Philippines, I mean, not surprisingly, drawing China's displeasure. Could this strain U.S.-China relations further or will China-Philippine ties keep worsen worsening? I believe, of course, it will definitely uh, have some nev negative ef effects towards uh, Philippine-China relations and also U.S.-China relations for large. I think Beijing's increasingly uh, dangerous maneuvers towards the Philippines' resupply missions towards the Second Thomas Shoal, of course, I think uh, is with an intent to force the Philippines into submission. And I believe that these kind of salami slicing tactics is nothing new. We've seen them many times before. And I think uh, many Philippine officials and American officials, nobody is naive about the intent of these actions. So if there's no uh, termination or pause in these kind of actions, of course, we risk going further down a very dangerous spiral here. And as we've seen from the United States and uh, other allied countries, they've already expressed their concerns. I think what's interesting is that DC has stated that, reiterated its com commitment under the MDT that any armed attack on Philippine forces, ships, even coastal guard mm -hmm. ships, is, uh, will actively activate its uh, related provisions in the MDT. I believe that this is a very important deterring message to Beijing. But what kind of effect would it have? Would it be enough to strengthen uh, Philippine resolve and protect its claim? Mm -hmm. That is something we need to continue to observe in the coming weeks and months. With rising tensions in the South China Sea, does friction between China and the Philippines pose a greater risk than the Taiwan Strait. That means that, uh, you know, the world, the whole world was concerned about the uh, Taiwan Strait uh, contingency or risks, risks. But all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> the tension was being drawn to the South China Sea. So, so what's your uh, observation of this, Professor? According to the economics, they thought, uh, they consider that Taiwan is the most dangerous spot <laughs> on mm -hmm. Earth. Mm -hmm. um, but not the China, not, not the South China Sea, yeah? 
So that you can see that really uh, Taiwan concerns uh, most of the country in China and, and so on in the United States. And the South China Sea it is also actually, uh, in, in my view, uh, very explosive yeah, because of the, uh, uh, the legacy from the history and also the international maritime law and, and, and also the uh, uh, mutual relations uh, uh, to, the, to all these countries. So it is actually the concern of the Chinese nationalism mm. and also a chain reaction. That means China, uh, from the Chinese perspective, they will say they will tackle the first that will break through the, uh, the red line, to break the red line, yeah? For instance, Taiwan, or for instance, the, uh, the Philippines. So they try their the hardest to prevent this kind of uh, problematic from further escalating. So they will do their best mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to try to play down this kind of conflict. But whether <laughs> they, will, they will succeed, this is another issue. So uh, for the moment, uh, it is very, I would say, the Chinese and uh, Filipino uh, conflict is very, very sensitive. Okay, okay um, Professor Tang and Mr. Zhang, thank mm -hmm. you for the great insights. In this episode, we discussed the reasons behind the Philippines' reluctance to engage in military cooperation with Taiwan. We also explored a more effective response to a potential contingency in Taiwan within the context of the U.S.-Philippine alliance. Did you enjoy our show? Please feel free to leave us a message and hit the subscribe button. See you soon.